Thank you, Brother David. We in, enjoyed that. Uh, David told us last week said he'd uh, him and his wife Sherry uh, had been praying for a church and uh, uh, that God had uh, just kind of opened the door. I think Ira and Paul invited them to come, and uh, they felt that was an open door. And that's what we need to do is uh, uh, God's church just love people and uh, let them know that we love them. And I, I appreciate the song there about God loving us and any. Does it despite our sin? I believe Romans 5, 8 says, But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And that was the purpose that he that loved us. And the purpose that he died for us is because uh, that we were sinners. And, and he was gracious and we were hopeless. Uh, and I'm thankful for that today. Uh, but uh, we ask that you pray for us this morning. Uh, and... Uh, uh, turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Matthew chapter number 28. Matthew chapter number 28, if you would. Continue to remember Idell, as we said. Uh, Jana said as she was coming out of the choir, and said she was mad because she shut her finger in the door and wasn't going to go to church. So uh, uh, she would have come on in if they'd have let her, probably. But, uh, but you can all pray for her. She said she hadn't got, got to go to church in two weeks because of the ice, and she was ready to come today. So I remember her. We, we miss her and Judy also. But uh, I'm going to read the, a very familiar scripture. I've never preached from this. Uh, I've used this scripture, can quote it, but I've never preached from it. Uh, we, we know this as the Great Commission. Uh, the Great Commission, and I know I hear pages flipping, you're turning to verse number 16, but Matthew 28, 16 is very familiar scripture. I, I've mentioned, I know at least one time, maybe on a Wednesday night, how the Lord really placed a burden on my heart, but, uh, uh, but how I, we mentioned really had a burden, and, and this sermon's come out of that burden. Uh, I knew uh, in the last two or three weeks, uh, probably a month ago, I mentioned having this burden and uh, uh, we knew immediately after a Sunday service last week that this is what we should try to preach on. Uh, it's going to be kind of hard. I told Tina, I said, I've studied more and prayed more. And uh, I said, this is the hardest message I've tried to preach in, in uh, five years probably for studying and preparing for it. But uh, I want you to just pray for us this morning. It'll be a blessing. I, I, and uh, just be patient with me this morning. It might take a while, but I promise it. it if we'll apply it to our lives, it'll be a blessing to our church. But we'll read it beginning with verse number 16. It says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word. Uh, Lord, we thank you uh, as you left. Uh, God, you commissioned us, uh, Lord, uh, and gave us a job to do. Uh, Lord, that how uh, we are stewards of your kingdom, and I pray, Father, that we just uh, use that that you've given us, your word, Lord, in the resources, God, your Holy Spirit, and your power uh, to reach those that are unsaved, uh, Lord, and uh, uh, even greater than that, Lord, to become uh, followers of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we pray, uh, Lord, today that you just help us deliver this message. God, we, we, uh, we've studied, but Lord, we know we can't deliver the message. Uh, except it's through your spirit and your power this morning. I pray that you'd help us do that. Uh, God, that we as a church would just sit with anticipation, God, what you have for us uh, this morning in this service. And Lord, that we'd take that, uh, that you uh, uh, inspire us with uh, this morning and, and cause us to move and to uh, live our lives, Lord, with the uh, mindset uh, of serving you and uh, eternity in mind. Uh, and not live so much, Lord, for the temporal, but for those things that are eternal, Lord, we pray. Now, pray that you forgive us, cleanse us, God, empower us this morning, for it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, you pray for us this morning. I always say that, but I, I mean it. Uh, but I, 
I, I, as we said one Wednesday night, a few probably been three or four Wednesday nights ago since I, I preached on Wednesday night, and I, I, I told the church that we're, we were going to have a message concerning the burden that I'd had, and, that, and we feel like that's what we should try to do this morning. Uh, but but I, I thank God for what He's doing at our church as far as our youth is concerned, and, and how uh, we've got some of them here this morning, quite a few Wednesday nights. We have uh, 20 to 24 kids uh, in our long in there somewhere in our Wednesday night program, and I, I just thank God so much for that. But uh, and, and we want to see that grow, and it, and it has been. Uh, but but I've uh, I said the the reason we do that is that we might reach them that they might be saved. And I we had a meeting one night with their family, and I said we make no bones about it. We're we're here not only to teach your kids. Uh, God's Word, but to see them saved one day. And that's the purpose that we do that. And that's the most important thing, is that they be born again. And that's, that's why we do that. Uh, but, then, but lately, I've, I've received the burden, and I, I, I said I want it to go deeper than that. And, and I've, never, I've never experienced this. You know, it's kind of uh, customary for the church to win souls uh, uh, that are lost, you know, that they might be saved. And that's what we're to be doing. And we're going to look at that in just a minute. Uh, but I don't believe that's the primary... Uh, thing that Jesus is meaning here in this scripture, and I'll show you why I say that in a minute there, uh, but, but I, I want them to experience what I've experienced throughout a lifetime, and, and I know you too, and I've mentioned this, y'all know where I'm going, uh, and, and I don't, I don't want to just get these kids saved, uh, but I, I want them to experience God for a lifetime. I want them to love God for a lifetime. I want them to live for God uh, for a lifetime, and I want you to do the same this morning. You may be here this morning, just uh, kind of uh, uh, not not. I don't I don't know the process. You may have been saved for years, but you've never really experienced God uh, in the fullest of loving and uh, living for Him. Uh, and that's what I want you to do uh, after this message day. And us as a church, I want us to go and do what Jesus uh, commissions us to do here in the Scripture. Now we tried to do a little reading and studying this week. I, I've read and I've even heard the number even being higher than what I've got wrote down. Seventy, at least seventy-eight percent of children fifteen years and older, once they reach the age of fifteen, quit going to church, and that really worries me. It worries me really bad because I've seen it. We're all witnesses to it. There's, there's children that were raised in this church that are not coming today. They may be going elsewhere, and that's all fine and good, but there's some that don't go anywhere. And see, that's part of that percentage. They were raised right. They were saved as a child, but they've quit that. And I want to change that. I really do, and I can't do that by myself, but God can. Why? Because He can change them from the inside out and make them I have a desire to have a deeper walk with God, a, a, a deeper relationship with God uh, than just being saved. And I'm glad I'm saved. I've said it before, there's nobody uh, uh, more glad to be saved than I am. But I tell you what, as the song said, and I appreciate Brother Jeff leading that, that's one of my favorite songs there. Uh, when, when we get saved and really uh, know what God wants to do with us and with our lives, as the boys read this morning, when we're bought with a price, we're no longer ours, and we're to submit ourselves to God. Uh, and when we do that, I mean, He makes life uh, uh, be uh, life fulfilled. He fulfills life, uh, and that's what I want people to experience. I just don't want them to experience salvation. I want them to experience God and and, and experience God for a lifetime. And that's what we want to try to do. Now, I've heard some percentages go as high as 80 or 85 percent, you know, of uh, children nowadays. I was talking to my brother-in-law the other day, and he was talking about there how uh, the younger generation, once they reach a certain age, uh, they just kind of leave church. Well, and I'll say this, I said this that Wednesday night, I mentioned this, a church and fellowship with God is something we don't outgrow. It's, it's something that we don't outgrow. It ought to grow uh, deeper, and it ought to grow more meaningful the longer we walk with God, and, and that's what we want for people there. Now, let's look just for a minute and that's the desire that I have uh, and the burden that I have in our church not only to see people saved but to see them walk with God and love Him as they should not, not just to be converted but to have that desire now uh, now let's look at the, uh, the, uh, the scripture just for a minute and we're going to close with the text this morning I, I really it's a pet peeve of mine for a preacher to read a passage of scripture and never preach from it that just, uh, just drives me crazy and I don't want to do that this morning, but it's going to be the very last thing that we look at now this morning. Now let's look at it real quick just for a minute. Now it says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee. Now uh, uh, it's what he says, Into a mountain where Jesus had appointed. Now 
Now this kind of reminds me of the earlier part of the book of Matthew, and I thought of this just this morning uh, between uh, brotherhood and uh, church service this morning. Uh, this is not the end of the book of Matthew. You say, well, it is in my Bible, uh, but, but it's not the closure of it. It's just the beginning is what it is. And this is a, a, the climax of the book. It's not a bitter end or something like that. It's what Christ, uh, the book of Matthew was written for and the purpose that Matthew was leading to the whole time uh, was to close with these two or three verses that we've read this morning. And it's the climax of the book. I thought about it when we preached a few months back there from Matthew chapter number 7 and verse number uh, 24. Now we didn't know we was going to do it. Just bear with us just for a minute. Listen to the very familiar scripture. And the Bible says there, Therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And we know the story there. And how I said that now, and I said that's not the message. That's not the message. Uh, if you read the scripture, Jesus says, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, he will liken unto him. So, so the uh, Matthew 7, 24 through 7, 28 there, it's not really the message. It's chapter 5, beginning with verse number 1 and how you have to go back and look at all the, the teachings that Christ did there and how that's the, uh, that's the, uh, the close of a, of a two chapter sermon if you read that and say that's kind of where the book of Matthew is this is what uh, he's been leading up to the whole time uh, it is the commission there because look at the scripture what he says and then I'm like, he says and Jesus uh, comes unto them uh, he says and, uh, well uh, so he says and Jesus came and spake unto them saying uh, all pow powers given me in heaven and earth. he says therefore Therefore what? Therefore all that he's taught in the entire book of Matthew there, uh, this, this is what I'm closing with, and because of what I'm ta I've taught you, this is what I want you to do. And that's what we're going to look at this morning. Now let's look at the Scripture just for a moment to get where we're going from. He says, Go therefore, in verse number 19, and teach all nations. Now I'm going to stop uh, just for a minute. Now I, I had to do a little studying, and I'm not a Greek scholar, but the Greek word, is, I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's mathetuo, if that's pronounced correctly. And it means to disciple is what that means. You, you're, I've got a Schofield Bible. He's even got in the margin of the Bible that that's what the word teach means in there. It means to, to disciple or to make disciples. And that's what Jesus is saying here in the Scripture there. Uh, he, he's saying, go therefore and make disciples, is what He's saying. Now you say, well, what is a disciple there? And, and, and most of us, if we would look at this and say, uh, and I, I've got a post-it note this morning, first time I've had a post-it note preaching in a long time, uh, but I had to, uh, with the way we're preaching this morning, uh, and what does it mean to make disciples? Uh, that's the I just wrote down, uh, uh, make disciples and put a question mark by it this morning. If we, most of us were to ask that, we'd say to go out and to reach the lost. To go out, as the Bible talks about in the parable of the Great Supper, and compel them to come in, uh, that they might hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and that they might be born again. And that's part of it. Uh, but that's, that, that's not what, uh, and that's called evangelism. It, that's the purpose of the church is to evangelize. But to go out and make disciples, that's not what it means. Uh, and you look up the word disciple, you say, well, preacher, what does it mean? Uh, it, 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 means to, to te it means to make disciples, means to make a follower, a, a, a learning follower is what that means, somebody that will follow Jesus Christ. And, and, and for a lifetime is what that means, uh, disciples is what it means. Now, uh, so, so most would think it was uh, evangelistic, but, and it is, that's the purpose of the church. But to, to make disciples is to make someone, not just to be saved, but to follow Jesus forever. And that's what making disciples means. And, and that's what I want. That's what I want us to do. That's what I want to do. That's what I want my life to be about is, is for people, as I've done said, to experience what I have experienced for the past uh, uh, 30-something years. I was saved when I was 12 and I'll be 50. So that'd be 38 years almost I've been saved. I'll be 50 in about a month. Uh, and, and that's what I want people to experience is something... And, and, and I'm living proof that Christianity is something that we do not outgrow. And we got a lot of teens here this morning. I want you to understand that you don't outgrow it. You grow with it is what you do. You, you grow as you walk with God and you grow and you grow and you grow until someday you'll reach a place of maturity as a Christian. And I, tell you, and I ain't reached it yet. Paul hadn't even attained it when he was nearing his death. He said not as though we had already attained it, but he was striving. He said, I pressed toward the mark. Uh, 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 the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus is what he said. Was he, he, was, he was striving for, for, for perfection. It's what he was doing. 
because you love God. Now let's look. I, I've got to go. I just kind of followed the leadership of the Lord this way. Now, now don't misunderstand me. The new birth is necessary. That's the next thing that I've got wrote down uh, on my uh, 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 post-it note there. Now John told Nicodemus, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God, is what Jesus told Nicodemus. Uh, Nicodemus marveled at that. Jesus told him again, he says, marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. He says, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Is what he said. Uh, like I heard a preacher say one time, he said, everybody that's talking about heaven ain't going there. Everybody's talking about heaven. But I tell you what, you'll never see the kingdom of God, and you'll never enter the kingdom of God until you are born again. And that's what Jesus teaches in uh, to Nicodemus there. Why is that? Uh, because it's not the natural born part of man that's going to make it to heaven. Uh, it's not going this, to... This, what you see right now will never make it to heaven. If you could see my soul, it'll make it there. Why? Because it was born again. Uh, one day when I was a 12-year-old little boy, and it's the born-again part uh, that's born for the new world, uh, for the new heaven and the new earth that God's created for them uh, that trust Him as Savior. And see, that's still necessary. And if you're going to get to heaven, you're going to have to do that. But I tell you what, it, it's, it, uh, Christianity is more in, than getting to heaven and staying out of hell. It, it, it is. And I want people to experience that. Am I making sense this morning? Uh, and I want them to experience that this morning. And that's what he says. Now, now I, I thought about the call. And now that's something that we, we can do our job. We can compel people to come in. We can go knock on doors. We can invite people. We can uh, uh, have a youth group. We can do that. And we can tell them about Jesus. But it's, it's Christ that calls them to salvation and to be a disciple. I thought about... Uh, there about the call of the disciples there and in Matthew chapter number 4 and this is a very familiar scripture I love it I've read it a couple of times this week I, I, you know the story there it says and Jesus is walking by now this is not the call of all of them it don't really say that much about some of them it says and Jesus is walking by the sea of the uh, Galilee and two brethren called P uh, Simon uh, called Peter and Andrew uh, casting their nets for they was fishers and Jesus walks by and he says follow me and I'll make you fishers of men and the Bible says they just laid down their nets and they followed Jesus and, and isn't that wonderful and it goes on it says and going on he saw two other brethren James uh, uh, the son of De Zebedee and John his brother were in the ship with Zebedee their father mending their nets and, and he called them it says it says in immediate they left their nets and followed him is what they did you read in the book of Matthew, chapter number 9, the same book, just, uh, just in verse number 9, I think it is, when, uh, uh, the call of Matthew, it says, And Jesus passed forth thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of customs, and he said unto him, Follow me, and he arose and followed him, is what he did. Now that's what Jesus does. He calls us to be disciples, is what he does. And that's what they did. They, they laid down what they were doing. Now pray this morning. I want you to pray. I prayed this morning. I tried to pray. I used to pray more before I preached. And I, boy, I got burned about that this morning. I was back there uh, in the uh, office of studying this morning, and I thought, man, i got to shut my Bible and pray. Because I, I, it seems like I used to preach more, with more power than that I do. And why is that? Uh, because I probably don't pray as much as I used to. And that's what we need. I tell you what, we need the power of God if we're going to preach like God wants us to preach this morning. And then, then preaching with power don't mean uh, screaming and yelling, but I mean freedom is what I need when I preach. But now listen just for a minute there, but now look what it says there. Uh, 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 th that's what we need there, uh, though it's the power of God. Now listen just for a minute. Now, now th and that's what, listen, uh, Jesus called, called them there. He called them uh, and he calls them to follow is what he does and that's what they do immediately the Bible says that they left what they were doing and they, and they followed him that's what they did now, now I got to move on or so we won't be here all day uh, now what, what does it now listen just for a minute what does it mean to be a disciple now I know I'm kind of uh, 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 beating the same drum here just for a minute but now uh, what does it mean to make disciple, but what does it mean to be a disciple? Now listen, what now I had to do a little research. Jesus said in John 8.31, He says, If ye continue in my word, ye are my disciples. Now what does continue mean? That means without end, doesn't it? I mean, I, you probably look up the word, it probably doesn't mean that. But it means not stopping, is what that means. And that's, and that's what it takes to be a disciple. It, it, it means to, once we start following, it's to not stop following, it's to continue in His Word. That's what Jesus said, John 8, 31. Uh, and, and to enjoy, or, or to know the joy of following. I, I hope joy radiates off of me. <laughs> 
I, I've said that before. I, I, I said it the other day. That I, I, nobody loves life as much as I do, and I hope people see that. But nobody loves serving God and loving God as much as I do. Am I perfect? No. I sin every day. I got down yesterday. I was so burdened. I, tell you, I get so discouraged sometimes the way I walk uh, with the Lord there. And the ways. Am I living a life of sin? No, but I sin every day. I do that and I get discouraged in that and I prayed and I begged God yesterday uh, to make me a better person than what I am that I might enjoy even more following and walking with Him as we should. Uh, because that's what we, we, we need to manifest that. And I'm going to show that in just a minute, Lord, being our helper. Uh, uh, but but uh, to continue in His Word is what it means to make a disciple. Now, uh, what, what, did, what does it require of us to be a disciple? Now, I know this is kind of just, and I didn't get this off the internet, folks. I God just out through the week, man. I Lord lay something on my heart, and I keep something. I wrote on my hand. You can see I've got writing on my hand. Lord gives me something. I'll write it down. When I get home, I'll put it on something so I won't forget it there. And, and that's what God's done all week there. Uh, what does it require of us? It requires sacrifice. And I think that's what people that are saved, truly born again, uh, they, they, they don't want to sacrifice. I, I, I love the song Brother David said, and how it's mentioned in script. I mean, in the uh, Sunday school, it's mentioned every time we come to the house of God, how Jesus Christ sacrificed, He gave His life for us, and that's what He requires of us if we're going to be disciples. He did it for us that we might be saved. The only sacrifice most Christians make is uh, stepping out of a pew and coming to the altar and getting saved. That's the only the the uh, the public proclamation that they're saved, uh, uh, or the public confession, and that's about it. But I tell you what, to be a disciple, it takes sacrifice, and I believe that's what scares people to death. They have to sacrifice. Now, listen just for a minute. What Jesus said in Luke chapter fourteen, in verse number twenty-six. <clears throat> just a moment. I, I I'm gonna try to be as brief as we can. Luke fourteen. What did I say? Uh, twenty-six. <clears throat> If a man come, I, I, I think Brother Trey or somebody read this the other night. If a man come unto me and hate not his father and his mother and his wife and his children and his brother and his sister, yea, in his own life he cannot be my disciple. Now that doesn't mean you're supposed to hate your wife. That doesn't mean you're supposed to, and you say, well, that's what it says. That means you're supposed to love God more than anybody else. That's what it means. And there's been times since, since I, and I tell you what, I, I, I was talking to Brother Lyman the other day at Pat's funeral and how he talked about when he, uh, uh, he, he, he told it went into his house. And I don't know how old Lyman, Lyman's like me. He's kind of up age before he started preaching. He said he went in uh, to his mother and his daddy's house and told him the Lord called him to preach. And he said, my mama jumped up out of the chair and ran out the back door screaming. And, and fell down in the backyard. Have you ever heard Lyman tell that? He said he fell down in the backyard, heard his mother did, praying, oh my God, don't call my boy to preach. Oh God, don't call my boy to preach. And he said she'd come back in, and his daddy said, amen, I'm glad he called you to preach. So he said, <laughs> and said, Mama, what'd you do that for? And she said, I, I know the life that a preacher has to live. And, and, and I tell you what, you don't know it till you experience what a preacher goes through and what sacrifice they have to make. And that's what I told Lyman. I said, man, I knew what I was getting into. The Lord began to deal with me when I was probably about 30 years old uh, to preach there. And, and man, I knew it. I knew it. I knew what it was like because I grew up in a pastor's home. I've seen my daddy away from home in revivals for weeks at a time. Us go, you know, we have, uh, we'd go as much as we could. We always did. But you'd have school work and you couldn't go. And I've seen, I, I've seen uh, just... Uh, my daddy's face just distraught because he knowed he wanted to serve God and he knowed uh, he loved God and he knowed he wanted to uh, do what God wanted him to do but he hated leaving his family. I've seen my daddy cry and, and tell me before he left that he, he missed us, he loved us and didn't want to go but he had to. And what is that? That's, that's the sacrifice that we have to make. And I tell you what, it might, and, and I believe that's why a lot of just uh, uh, lay Christians are afraid to sacrifice it all for God. Afraid God will require them to do something else. Now I know he's going here. We're just trying to, but is that not the truth? Sacrifice. People don't know what sacrifice is, and I myself withhold in some places that I should not. But I try my very best to sacrifice for God, and I knew. That's what I told him, and I said I knew what I was getting into. And he said, yes, you did, because him and my daddy were good friends, and how uh, he knew that. And I said, because I grew up in a preacher's home. But I tell you what, that's what it requires. You look, go on, read that scripture there. It says, and whosoever doth not, and I'll look, I'm going to read that in a minute, and I'm going to read that again, whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be his disciple. Not only do we have to sacrifice, but we have to carry a cross. I preached a message on that one time at Town Creek about 
uh, bearing our cross. And boy, God just revealed that to me, how all about that and how uh, that, that's what we must do. We must bear a cross. Now listen, just for a minute. Uh, Jesus set the perfect example. Now, uh, disciples' requirement, and I just read it, Jesus set the perfect example in John chapter 10 and verse number 11. What does the Bible say? Uh, the Bible says that G I, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And see, that's what we must do uh, uh, as Christians. We're, we're to, you say, well, I'm not a preacher. Well, I am. And, and you're not, but we all must give our life for the sheep. It's what we should do. Sacrifice. We must sacrifice. Now, why? Because we're to, we're to be like Jesus. Jesus gave his, literally gave his life. Uh, I, I believe it's okay if we should live our life. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking we have to die. We need to uh, uh, be a living sacrifice. We need to live, sacrifice our lives, live our lives and, Jesus, and follow the example of Jesus that he gave his life. Now, <clears throat> disciples are to follow to the end. I'm going to have to do this again one Wednesday night. I'm going to have to yell at these kids. <laughs> on Wednesday night, I, I, disciples, uh, disciples, DJ's here. D DJ's here. He's listening. I, I was telling Tina about DJ the other day. He's a good little boy. I tell you, he's inspiring to me. All these kids are. All of our kids inspire me. So That's what makes me want to work so hard. It's my love for these kids. I, I, and I'm, I will say something about that in a minute. And that's what they'll see in us. Now listen, I've I got to hurry. I, I'm gonna be, we're going to be here all day. But I've got a lot. That God bless me with this message. A disciple should follow to the end. You hear me, young, young people? Disciples follow to the end. Not, till it gets, not as long as it's just convenient. We follow to the end. It's what we do. Now listen. Uh, John, I, and I'm, I'm just going to give you these references. Write them down. I ain't got time to go through them all this morning. In John chapter 21 and verse number 18, we know the story. Jesus has re been resurrected from the dead. Uh, the disciples are around. He's fixing to ascend. You know the story. They've been fishing. They just eat some fish on the fire that Jesus caught and cooked. You know the story. And how uh, Jesus says unto them, uh, unto Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? We know the story. And he says, yes, I love you. And he says, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And Peter says, yes, I love you. And he says, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And Peter was grieved because he'd asked him three times, Peter, do you love me? And he says, Lord, you know all things. And you know that I love thee. That's what he said. And Peter, Peter's like me. is kind of a mouthpiece. <laughs> like to speak when he probably shouldn't, you know, sometimes. But I tell you what, Peter loved God, did he not? You read the epistles of Peter, man. Pete, I, I, I don't, now, I know John, John, and John's careful to tell you, the disciple whom the Lord loved. He said over and over again, the disciple whom the Lord loved. You know, John's like, I'm his number one. But I tell you what, Peter loved God, did he not? He loved Jesus Christ with all his heart and his soul and his mind. As you'll see in a minute. But how, and that's what he did, and it grieved him. And the Lord tells him there, you know the story there. And it said, Peter, he, Lord says unto Peter, says, Verily I say unto thee, when thou was young, thou girdest thyself and walkest where thou wouldest, but when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thine hands and another shall go to thee and carry thee where thou wouldest not. This spake he signifying the death and death that he would glorify God. So we know Peter. You read the Fox Book of Martyrs, uh, it's, it said that. That and and Christ as people say, well, the Bible don't say that. Yes, it does. Jesus is talking about stretching forth his hands. He's telling that Peter will be crucified. That's what that's what the Bible says. And, and history has it that he was crucified upside down. Now, whether that's right or not, I don't know. But it said they were going to crucify him. He said he wasn't worthy to hang on the cross the way his Lord did. He said, crucify me upside down. That's what they did. Why? Because he followed to the end. That's what he did. He did that. Now. Uh, another, uh, uh, Paul, and I, I, I know here I go, i got to hurry. Paul followed to the end. We know the story. Uh, he, he said the uh, uh, Second Timothy chapter 4, he says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. He's fixing to be beheaded. History has that. that that's what he means. He, he considers himself at being poured out as an offering for God. That's what he says. He said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith, is what he says. Why? He followed to the end. The Apostle Paul did. 
Uh, why? Because he was a disciple of the Lord. Now you say, well, hey, wasn't the twelve of them, the eleven after? We're all disciples. Uh, and Paul was too. He says, henceforth it's laid up for me. And I, I'm not going to go on. You know the story. Paul followed to the end. Why? Because he loved God. That's what he did. And he was a disciple. Disciples followed him. The Apostle John, chapter 1 and verse number 8 of the book of Revelation this morning. Now, as far as we know, John's the only one that didn't die a martyr, but in a sense he did. Why is that? Because he was on the Isle of Patmos for the, with the, for the Word of God and the testimony. In verse number uh, uh, 9 of chapter number 1 of Revelation, and far as we know, he died on the Isle, Isle of Patmos. Ninety-something years old uh, when he penned the book of the Revelation. But now listen, just for a minute. He died there. More or less, he was a martyr also. He died. He stayed faithful to the end. That's what he did. Now, we'll all do that. No, and I thought of this. There's no guarantee as the best that we can do that our young people will always follow the Lord and be true disciples. But we need to do our very best to make sure they are. I mean, we need to do our very best. And, and, I, and, and I don't know who's responsible for me. I really don't. And I'm not saying I'm the perfect disciple, but I've not quit on God. Let's don't quit on God. I don't know if it, I don't know if it's my family's raising. I'll, I'll give them credit. I'll give God all the credit. It's by His grace. It's by His grace that we've stayed with Him, and that He's kept us all these years by His grace. Uh, but I tell you what, I, I think all the, I could name you Sunday school teachers. You think, oh, I'm not making an impact. I've got a I got a coffee mug at home, and, and, and I drank out of it yesterday, and it says, "Teachers reach touch eternity." Is what it says. And we all have the opportunity. If we can touch a kid's life, we can make an impact in a kid's life. We can do that. Uh, we really can. And we need to see that. Every time we come in contact uh, with a kid, we've got an opportunity to uh, 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 make a, a mark on them that will last a lifetime. And, and, and let's remember that. Now, now, now let's go on down uh, the Scripture. Will they all follow? No, they won't. Now, why? Because Jesus was the perfect example. I thought about John chapter number 6 while we were studying how uh, Jesus gives the discourse, I am the bread of life. Uh, you know the story, uh, how, how He did that. And when He did that, it says, but, uh, it, says uh, it offended some. You, you, you can read the story. He said, doth this offend you? What if you shall see the Son of Man uh, ascend up where He was before? And it said, It is the Spirit that quickens the flesh profiteth nothing. I speak unto you, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. He said, But there are some of you that believe not. Now listen just for a minute. For Jesus know from the beginning who them would that believe and who would betray him. He's talking about Judas. He said, Therefore he said unto you, No man can come to me except my, it were given him of my Father. Uh, he said, From that time, now listen, verse 66, John 6, 66, From that time many of his disciples, look what it says, Many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. They were temporary disciples. They were part-time disciples is what they was. And they, they walked till the walk got hard. And then they walked with the Lord no more, it says. That, that, I mean, they left him. And were they disciples? It says they were. Were they saved? Most likely they were. But they didn't walk with him no more. And look what it says. Uh, and he says, from that time, many of the disciples went back and walked with him no more. Now I love this scripture. Then Jesus said unto the twelve, will you also go away? Look what he says. And Peter answered and says, Lord, to whom shall we go? For thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of God. And what's Peter saying in saying that? I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I believe that's way, and we know he did. We know later, and the Lord goes right on and tells him uh, 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 that, that he'll uh, later in Scripture there that oh yeah you will deny me. But I tell you what, but what does the Lord tell him there in John chapter number? I mean uh, Luke chapter number twenty two, I think it is. He says, but when thou art converted, uh, what does he say? Uh, I'm going to read it uh, real quick. Uh, here I go again. Uh, uh, we, we know the Scripture there. P Peter knew. Read Matthew 16, I think it is, when he asked, whom do, whom do men say that I am? And some, all you know, the name this and this and that and the other, and Peter says, we believe that, and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's what he said. Peter knew who he was, and he loved him for that. And he was determined to follow him. And we know he failed, just like uh, 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 we all do at times. 
But Peter loved him to the end and followed him to the end. But So there's no guarantee that, that uh, some will not go away. Now listen, I, I, I've got to go. The conversion. Now, I, I, I kind of thought of this clever thing this morning, uh, and, I, and I, I can't even remember it because I didn't write it down, but how God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus calls, the Holy Spirit convicts and converts but it's, now I'll say this, now I might be wrong in this, but it's what the Lord laid on my heart, but it's up to me and you to convince people to become disciples. You believe that? Now I know God, God calls, Christ calls disciples. He saves, He converts, and all this stuff, but I believe it's mine and your witness that will convince children or convince anybody to follow forever. You believe that? If we set a bad example, they're not going to go, want to go there. If we set a good example, something we do might make them want to go there. Uh, and, and I believe it's up to me and you to convince them. <clears throat> now, pray. First of all, I, I've got about I, I, I've done this back in the room this morning, looked and run some references. H- how do we do that? We do that teaching by example. Now, we've heard pe- parents say, and I've heard people say, a, a kid, a something's better caught than it is taught. Have we heard that? If you do something, most likely your kids will do it. You know, you can you can do something and teach your kids otherwise, and they're still going to do what you do. Why? Because something is caught better than taught. So, in other words, we need to lead by example. Is what we need to do. We need to be an example. And I know you are. I'm not up here panning y'all on the head with the Bible this morning, telling you it's all living wrong. All that's not what I'm saying this morning. But we need to be realize. I mean, we need to realize that we lead by example. Uh, this morning, and, and we teach by example. And, and I wrote on my post-it note, in the margin, I wrote this down in the margin, example, we need to have faith like Caleb. He's sitting back yonder this morning. We got faith like Caleb. We need to have faith like Caleb is what we need to do. We need to have fidelity like Joshua. And I got the references, if y'all want to write these down, uh, faith like Caleb is Joshua 14, uh, uh, Joshua 24, you know where Joshua says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Uh, we need to have courage like David, 1 Samuel 17. We need to live a holy life like Daniel. You read the first uh, chapter of the book of Daniel, or, or actually the whole book of Daniel. Patience like Job, uh, and, and Christian living like Paul. Now, I may enough soul write them down. I, and maybe uh, somebody did, but that, that's what we need to do. Now, I, I, I could have preached a message on all those, but we didn't have time, but that's, what, that's how we lead by example. Are we committed because... A child knows when you're committed or not. They can read you like a book. They can. They can read us like a book. That's the way kids are. Uh, they can do that. Now, how do we do that? Now, I've got to hurry real quick. I'm going to write these. You write them down. I'm, I'm closing in about 30 minutes. Now, listen. <coughs> how do we do that, preacher? How do, we, how do we lead by example? Now, listen real quick. I didn't said that. John 13, 35. We love them. That's what we do. There's nothing that will draw somebody unto you or to God like love will. Nothing. Nothing will draw nobody. Nothing will draw anybody like love. That's what John, Jesus said in John 13, 35, By this men shall know that you are my disciples. What? Love. Love one another. Uh, that's what we... And, and love... Just, just, show, just show that you love them. That's all you got to do. And I tell you what, they'll eat it up. That's what they'll do. Now ne- next thing... Lead. We need to lead gently like a shepherd. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 11. Uh, it talks about the way Christ leads. That's what we do. Humility. We need, we need to be the model of humility. That's what we need to do. John chapter number, uh, I mean Matthew chapter 10 and verse number 24. Uh, we need to bear our cross. I've done use that one. Uh, uh, we, need to bear, we need to lose our life. That's also from Mark chapter number 8. It's almost what we read in Luke a while ago. Uh, but but that's what it is. It, whosoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel is the same shall save. We need to lose our life. There are so many people living for nothing. Even Christian people, they live for their job. They they live for their uh, they, you know they live for this. They live for things. They do this, that, and the other. We need to live for Jesus. That's what we need to do. I mean I mean can we do things in joy? Absolutely, I do. Ain't nobody loves to hunt, nobody loves to fish, nobody loves to play, nobody loves to do anything as much as I do. I've told you that there. But, but I live for Jesus. For to me, Paul says in Philippians 1.21, 
for to me. And that's what Paul said. He's like, you can do what you want to do, but you read the Scripture. He says, but for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain, is what he said. And, and, and that's what we should do. We, are, are you true? Is that your purpose? Is what I'm getting to. You do all the other enjoyable things in life that you want to do, but what's your purpose for living? For reaching others, not only to see them saved, but to make them want to follow Jesus for a lifetime. Is that making sense? That's where the message is this morning. Okay, the end result, what is that? What's the end result? That these children or anybody you come in contact with, they will love God like you love God. That's what I want. I want people to love God like I love God. I want, I want to love God like Peter loved God. I want to love God like Paul loved God. I want to love God like John loved God. How did they do that? They loved Him enough to give their lives for Him. And that's what I, and I tell you what, we'll never know the true joy of serving God until we love God like that. The lawyers in Matthew chapter number 22 came to Jesus trying to trap, trap him and said, Master, what is the great commandment in the law? And he says, uh, That thou love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind, and the second is like unto it, that thou love thy neighbor as thyself. And what they tell Jesus, Thou hast answered right. That's what they said. They didn't have an answer, they, they done it to trap him. But that's what he said. And I tell you what, why? That's what we're to do. We have to, to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. And I, one of the Gospels says, and with our strength, I think also. Uh, and that's what we're to do. And see, that's what we want for them. They'll never be fulfilled as a child of God until they are. And, 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 and experience God for a lifetime. Now, look at the text real quick. What is it, One thirty, two o'clock? Uh, look at the text real quick. And, and, and then I'm going to... Uh, this is the Great Commission. I'm leaving you with it this morning. We're not going to sing an invitation song this morning. I, I'm, I'm going to leave it with you. That's what we're going to do this morning. Now let's look real quick. Uh, our head's looking down at your Bible. If you got a Bible, I want you to look at it. I want you to see what there is in the Script. I didn't make this up. It's in the... How do we do it, preacher? This is where the climax of the book. This is where... Uh, uh, the book was closed because as I've done said this is where Matthew was leading the whole time and this is what he commissioned us to do is, is to make disciples and, and make disciples is not just getting people saved it's making disciples learning followers of Jesus forever okay and that's what we, we, need, we need to be about now look what he says then said he uh, then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee. I'm going to hit this real quick. not going to say a word about them. Into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. First of all, we need to obey what Jesus tells us to do. Listen, and we need to go where Jesus tells us to go. Now see how plain that is in Scripture? It's just like I've read that all my life. And you really get to a passage of Scripture and study it. I mean, God will just open your eyes. It's like, oh man, that's been there all these years. And I didn't know that. Go, see, they had to be where Jesus wanted them to be. That's where we'll have to be if we're going to make disciples. Next thing, look at it. He says, and when they saw Him, they worshipped Him. The second thing we must do is worship. We, we, when we come to the house of God, we need to worship. We don't just need to come sing our songs and do this. We need to worship. That last Sunday and Sunday before that, we had worship, did we not? The last, and we may have had a little bit this morning. But I, I said the other day, I'm the first to admit, sometimes I'm dry as toast sometimes when I come to the house of God. But we need to worship Him. We need to worship Him. Uh, you, you look up the word worship in the concordance, uh, I get you a strong, exhaustive concordance of the Bible, and you look up the word worship, and it goes through all the worship Him here, worship Him there. You read Psalm 148, I think I read yesterday, talks about everything worshiping and praising Him. Creation does. We can take a lesson from creation because it worships God. We need to be here where he, obedient, be where He wants us to be, go where He wants us to go, uh, worship Him. The next one, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, we need the power of God. We need, say it again, I'm going to say it again, we need the power of God. We cannot do anything in our own power. We cannot reach people. We cannot preach. We cannot sing. We cannot pray. We cannot do anything without the power of God. And we've got to realize that. You read in the Great Commission, the book of Luke, uh, Jesus tells them, oh, uh, uh, but wait, tarry ye at Jerusalem till ye shall be endued with power from on high. Why? Because He knew they could not do His work until the Holy Spirit came. 
You read Matthew chapter number 4 where John baptized Jesus. What happened? The Holy Spirit came and lit upon Him like a dove. Why? Because Jesus Christ could not do the ministry of His Father without the power of God. Now, if He can't do it, we can't do it. We've got to have God's power. We've got to be obedient. We've got to worship Him. We've got to have His power. And, and, and the next one, in verse number 19, the first word, we've got to go. We've got to get up off the stool of do-nothing. A lot of people, as ch- children of God, been saved for years, uh, 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 sit on the stool of do-nothing. I don't know what that is. I used to hear my grandmother say that. I don't know what that is. I've never seen that stool. I probably sit on it before and didn't see it. But I used to hear her say that. Get off the stool of do-nothing, boy. That's what you do. And, and that's what we, we need to go. We need to take action. That's what I wrote in my Bible, by the word go. Okay, the, the next in there. Therefore, teach all nations, meaning make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things. Now look at this. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. See, he, he points at them. He didn't say, he didn't, you teach that bunch out there. That ain't what he said. <laughs> That's not what he said. He says, teach, uh, look what he says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. You say, well, this is what God has instructed me to do and He wants you to do the same. That's what we do. That, that's the, the last thing. We teach by example. I've done use that one, but that's what we do. We teach by example. Now, real quick, we, we're obedient. We worship. We must have His power. We must go and we must be an example. And you say, I don't want to be an example. You, I heard a Sunday school teacher one time. Uh, he's over at Town Creek. Uh, uh, Brother Jason Doctor. He said something one time. He was the adult Sunday school teacher. He said something one time. I'll never forget. He said, and I think about it occasionally. He, he said, he's talking about professional athletes and all this stuff. And they said, oh, we don't want to be a role model. He said, I hate it, but they already a, a, are a role model. You can be a good one or a bad one. When you're in a public eye or, or, or something and, and people are watching you, you're a role model where you want to be one or not. Everybody is. You are. You say, well, I'm not a professional athlete. Yeah, but you're a person. You've got an influence on somebody whether it's positive or negative. Uh, and, and that's what we need to realize that. We, we lead by example and, and we need to realize that. People are watching. And, and the last thing I've got wrote on my post-it note, what are you living for? this morning, to make disciples. Stand to your feet. That's why the Lord saved us. Now, if I ask you the definition of what making disciples is when you leave here this morning, what, what, does, that, what does that mean? It just doesn't mean getting people saved. It means making... Now, remember this. It means making people followers, learning followers of Jesus Christ for a lifetime. For a lifetime. I don't want, them to, I don't want anybody to experience God just when they're a little kid. I want them to experience God for a lifetime. Because there's nothing like serving God, are there? Nothing like loving God. Don't forget His benefits. Psalm 103. Let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we come to You and we just thank You so much, Lord, today for Your Word. Uh, God, we thank You, Lord, for this message that You give us. And God, we just uh, uh, failed You. I know, God, in trying to get it out. But I pray that the, the main thing, Lord, that we just leave this place realizing God, that we live for a purpose, and that purpose, Lord, is to uh, reach others not only with the saving gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, but, Lord, uh, that they too uh, can experience the joy of walking with You. And, Lord, we just thank You that it's by Your grace that You let us do Your work. Lord, it's the greatest job we could ever have, Lord, is doing Your work. Uh, God, just what a privilege it is. And uh, God, we just thank You, Lord, for giving us opportunity. And I pray... Uh, as a congregation of people, that we'd realize why, the purpose that we're here, the purpose that this uh, beautiful church sits upon this hill, Lord, is to reach people with the message of the gospel, Lord, and to show, uh, just show people, Lord, uh, the love that you have for them. Uh, and I pray that we just manifest that, Lord, I, I ask. And God, that you just take this and let us leave this place and meditate on this all week, God. And I pray that you just forgive me, God, when when we fail you. Lord, we do. Uh, We don't want to present a false humility, God, but you know the areas where I fail. And I pray, oh, Father, that you just help me, God, to live my life for no other purpose, Lord, but but to to love and to serve you and to see people saved and and to lead lead them, uh, Lord, to walk with you. 
Uh, now, I pray if there's one here this morning that's unsaved and they've never uh, received You as their Savior. Lord, as we pray right now and You've convicted their heart, I pray that they'd just uh, surrender all and that they'd just ask You into their heart. Lord, we pray uh, that You might come into them. And Lord, that You'd fill their empty, uh, void heart, God, with Your Holy Spirit. And God, that we might see the radiance on their face. Uh, Lord, and they too might know that uh, they know You and that they'd not doubt. Uh, God, and then make a profession, Lord, that they've believed on. Not an empty profession, but God, a real one, Lord, we pray, that it, that would last for an eternity, uh, Lord, this morning. Now, we just thank You for this place. Pray that You'd bless it. Bless our efforts, God. Thank You for all that You're doing here. And it's uh, but for Your glory that we do everything. Uh, and for Your glory we pray in Jesus' name this morning. Amen. Amen.